If men were angels, no government would be needed. James Madison once said that. What does that mean to you? What do you think he was trying to imply? Was he implying that man is innately, innately not good? Was he implying that if man were, were would think about others above above self and the community as a whole, will we need government? These are this, that's a it's a pretty interesting statement for uh, the fourth the future at the time he made the statement the future fourth president of the United States to make. Anyway, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about some things like politics. What is politics? Right. Politics. Politics is the process of resolving conflicts on how society should use its scarce resources. Now, government doesn't does not always give us everything we need. So sometimes organizations will uh, ask the government for a grant, and you know the grant might be half of what's needed to operate the organization for whatever it is that organization might be doing. So then they have to get funds from an outside source. Uh, and what we call an NGO, non-government organizations. But when we talk about politics, it's almost like it's intentionally done to cause conflict with, within groups, right? So what, they, what, do they, what, are they, what are these scarce resources over? Over who should receive various benefits? Okay, well, what kind of benefits? Well, benefits might be something such as, uh, uh, something such as, let's talk about, maybe like a senior center for senior citizens. Uh, you have a community where there's a lot of seniors and they want a senior center, but also there's, you have a community where there's a lot of, of, of young people also, right? And they want a community center for young people, a community center for young people to go play. You see where there might be a conflict where the older people feel like, hey, you know what? We, we, we have sacrificed, we worked for 30, 40 years, now in our twilight years, our, our later years, our retirement years, we should be able to have a place for us to go and play bingo. Well, the young people are saying, well, we don't want to be on drugs. We want to stay out of trouble. We need a place to go to play games and to get tutoring and whatever. You know, so, so government will only give just enough for one of the two things, not both, right? And so, so how, does it, how, how does everybody benefit from it? Well, we don't know. One thing, one thing that politics does assume that is that there's going to be some kind of social conflict that will be inevitable. Now, what is social conflict? Social conflict is disagreements among people in a society over what the society's priorities should be. Now, U.S. students, I don't know your ages or what, whatever, but based on how old you are, if you have family or not, single or married, um, uh, <coughs> based on your occupation, you're going to have different priorities than other people. So therefore, you're going to want certain things. You're going to need certain things, right? So if you're a single mother, you're probably going to need, you're probably going to need certain things. If you're a married woman who works, you're probably going to need certain things, right? As opposed to uh, 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 a married woman who stays home and she probably doesn't need daycare like the single mother and the married working mom does. So there, there's going to always be something that will cause people to disagree because how see things from the purview uh, of our When we look at government, government very, is, uh, which is individuals and institutions that right? make societies Yes, rules. it is. Okay? And this is about le uh, what's legitimate. What do, we only listen to people who we think are legitimate. If a police officer walks up to you and he only has a badge, you're probably going to listen to him because you because you see the badge as a as a um, as something that makes him legitimate, and because you can tell it's real, it's a real badge with this real badge number, and so on and so forth. If he walks up with you to you with a uniform and a badge, you're probably going to listen to him again because there it's a, there's something legitimate about him being in a uniform with his and have a badge on. Now, if he walks up to you just in a uniform but no badge, are we going to listen to him? Are is there is he is he a legitimate authority? You're probably going to question that. You're probably going to look at it from the point, viewpoint either he forgot his badge, he could be a husband playing 
uh, role-playing games with his wife. We don't know. But we won't listen to him. We won't take him seriously because we're, we're viewing this from the vantage point of he doesn't have a uniform and a badge. The badge is what's going to make him legitimate. Uh, even, again, if he just had a badge and a suit on, you might think he's a detective. So you might listen to him because not all police officers wear a uniform. But not all but all police officers have they all police officers should have a badge. That's what separates them from the rest of us and that's what gives them that while they're on duty a sense of authority and a legitimacy. Uh they possess the power and authority to enforce rules. So the, now this is now this is a two. We're looking at this from a two-way uh, point of view. There's going to be power and there's going to be authority. Now there are people out there who have power but they don't have authority. Beyonce has power, right? Yeah, because Beyonce has the power to the, abil the ability to influence the behavior of others, right? Yes, she does. Uh, the Kardashians they have the ability to uh, influence the behavior of others. May they be uh, thirteen-year-olds doesn't matter. The point is they they have a power. Right, Donald Trump as President of the United States has power. He, right, he does have an ability to influence the behavior of others, we, as we saw last week in uh, Charlotte, Charlottesville, um, Virginia. Right. So when we're talking about authority, Donald Trump has authority, his ability to legitimately exercise power. He's a legitimate President of the United States, regardless how you might feel about him as an individual. The point is, he's the legitimate president of the United States. So therefore, he has the legitimate ability to, to exercise a certain amount of power. Because he's the president, doesn't mean he can do whatever he wants. That's the great thing about America. The president just doesn't rule by, by like a, as if he's a dictator. So, now we're going to look at the purposes of government. Now, government resolving conflicts, right? Government kind of starts conflicts, but at the same time, they are the ones tasked with resolving our conflicts. Power and authority enable government to resolve conflicts by making and enforcing laws. Yes, we, there are laws. We have laws. We're, we're, we're a nation of laws. That's one thing America prides itself on being, is a nation of laws. So we have laws, and we normally follow most laws, right? Sometimes we do drive around without our, light, our seatbelt on, but after a while, if you have a up to newer car, the little beeping sound starts to happen. So you therefore know that, hey, I need to put my seatbelt on. Placing limits on what people can do. Yes, that's the role of government. There, there are certain things we can't do. We can't yell bomb in a crowded airport. You can't yell fire in a crowded room. But we do have, we do have freedom of speech. But there's some, some speech is not protected, especially when it's in, it, it harms the person of another. Right? So we, we have freedom of speech. There's things we can say. But we can't just do whatever we want because if it if it has an adverse effect on someone else, then you're harming you then then your speech is harming another person, and that and that cannot be uh, allowed in in our type of a, a society because due to us being a uh, uh, a land of laws, right? So. We also have the ability to develop court systems to make final decisions. This is why we have a Supreme Court of the United States. They are their final authority on anything that comes into the court. Now, Congress can overturn that, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but Congress does have the ability to overturn court decisions along with, along with the help of the President of the United States. But we'll get to that later on when I'm talking about the presidency, the Congress, and the Supreme Court. Right now we're just talking about America and how government is in the business of resolving conflicts. Sometimes they start, right? So, also, uh, the role of government, the purpose of government is providing public services. Yes, we need government for things that are essential to us that cannot be provided for by ourselves, right? So they have to affect everyone. So you can't just say uh, the services only only are only affect person A but not person B. Uh, national defense. And let me go back real fast. Let me go back. When I say services for all, like the mail, post office, if you have an address, the post office cannot just say I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, Send Ken, send me Ken mail because we don't like him or he doesn't like us. They have to deliver my mail just like they have to deliver all your mail. That's why it's services for all. Uh, national defense. Um, 
The goal, role of government is to protect all its citizens, not just certain citizens, even though we have some people in our society that wishes it would just that some of us that some of us due to maybe skin color, religious background, whatever, sexual orientation are not considered American. But guess what? We all are. Uh, they're also in charge with, of domestic law enforcement, laws governing clean air and safe drinking water. And that go, the clean air drinking water goes back to the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, which was, believe it or not, started by Richard M. Nixon. So that's a little FYI. Uh, Powerless of government uh, providing per public services, services restricted to citizens who are in need at, in a particular time. We saw this in 2008. We saw a lot of Americans in need and want, and it, w it wasn't easy for a lot of people. But the great thing about America is the role of government. Government is supposed to step in, and FDR with his New Deal, that was the role, that was the goal of New Deal, because he didn't, because the idea was we cannot ever see people be that poor, that broke. This is why we have Social Security. Social Security kicks in because back before Social Security, people worked till they died. And that's just not realistic in a society like ours where we say we're number one, we're the best, and we're the best. we got to treat our people the best, right? Uh, health and welfare benefits. May it be uh, Medicare, Medi-Cal, uh, Med uh, the any of those type of medical benefits that benefits, those, especially poor people, you know, poor people and children. And we should be, we should have those things in place to help those who are in need. Uh, benefits derived from the Americans with Disability Act. Uh, this is pretty important because people who are disabled for, uh, are now able to, and this has been for at least 30 years, are, are, there's something in place to benefit those who are disabled, may it be uh, Section 8. Uh, also, health care benefits, all, uh, uh, SSI checks every month to help supplement whatever other low income they might have come in. And the goal, and the reason why government does this is to provide protection from hardships. Okay, um, this is it's beneficial to all of us when people, when government steps in to help. Um, I know a lot of times we, we, a lot of us feel like, why am I paying for everybody else? Well, it's good to pay for everybody else because when everybody, when everybody's able to uh, get something to support themselves, then we are able, we as a nation do better. And we really do economically, and this has been proven economically, uh, uh, this is definitely a true statement. I, and I want to be clear on that because we always think people on welfare are on welfare for life. That... Um, the system has since changed. They have welfare to work programs now. So people don't get to stay on welfare forever. Most people who are on those type of uh, social assistance programs are people who work at Walmart. You know, places that pay minimum wage because inflation has increased, but minimum wage is not. So people have to work two and three, four jobs just to, just to pay rent and maybe feed their kids the bare minimum. And it's not always healthy foods. Uh, and so, and these are usually caused by economic recessions and depressions. And we saw a big recession uh, at the end of George W. Bush's term in office and Barack Obama's beginning of the Barack Obama presidency. Locally, what are some government services? Think about that. Mail carrying is a government service. Also, some things are outsourced, like trash waste management is an outsourced government service. Okay. Um, if it got so bad that waste management stopped picking up people's garbage, government would have to step in and start doing it again. And those used to be really good jobs. Uh, garbage men used to be really good jobs. There's a movie with Denzel Washington and Viola Davis called Fences, and that's what he is. He's a garbage man. It's, it, at one point, those were government jobs. They, were, they had benefits. It was a really good job to have. Okay, also a, thing about, also a great thing about the purpose of our government is defending the nation and its culture. The U.S. government ensures national security through Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, and Coast Guard. The Constitution gives the national government exclusive power of foreign relations, so we will never see Jerry Brown as governor of California go to China and sign trade deals with China. He can't. Just can't happen. Okay. 
Okay, no matter what you might hear about on Fox News or wherever, what right wing uh, media is there to uh, attack Jerry Brown because he's a li dem liberal Democrat, he cannot go to China and make any kind of deals. That's through the Department of State, through the Secretary of State, who's the President of the United States Chief uh, Diplomatic Officer. Uh, defense capabilities against foreign attacks uh, preserves the culture and integrity of our nation. And I usually ask students, what is the culture of America? What is, what, especially when it's food. What is, our, what, what is our culture when it comes to food? You know, somebody said, when I, asked, I asked it in one of my on-ground classes, and somebody said, well, fried chicken and all that stuff is uh, American. I said, but so is tacos, and so is burritos, so is pizza, so is lasagna, so is Chinese food, so is Taiwanese food, so is Thai food. I mean, we can just go Brazilian. We, we tend to, America's a hodgepodge of other cultures, so we tend to take from other people and make it our own. And there's nothing wrong with that. What a great thing. You know, I, I love, that's what I love most about being an American. Okay, so now we have, there's other types of government. There are some that are undemocratic systems. We have autocracy. Power and authority of the government are in the hands of a single person. A lot of people say, like to say North Korea. North Korea is not an autocracy. Let's be clear on that. Uh, Kim Jong-un is, is the head of a government, but the military pretty much keeps him uh, pretty much in, at the head of that government. Um, you know, when there's a single person, I guess you can say uh, Saudi Arabia. There's a king. He's the absolute authority in that country. He would be an autocrat. Uh, we have monarchs, and so now, listen, there's going to be two types of monarchs. So now you can have a monarch that's an absolute monarch, which is, a, and which I, and Saudi Arabia is an autocratic uh, country because the people can't speak out against the king. Oh, another, uh, yeah, so I'll stick with that. We have two types of monarchs, okay? Uh, you have king, queen, emperor, inter, empress is the highest authority in the government. Okay, but there's two types. They're, you're going to have the, you're going to have one that's going to be a constitutional monarch, and then you're going to have one that's an absolute monarch. And again, the king of Saudi Arabia is an absolute monarch. The queen of England, Elizabeth uh, II, is, is a constitutional monarch. Now, monarchs obtain their power through inheritance, right? So they have this idea that, which is called the divine, the divine right theory. Monarchs' right to rule was derived directly from God. So God gave them that authority. Queen Elizabeth is the head of the Anglican church, right? So she, she's the next person below God in, as far as the British, um, as far as British society is, is concerned. We're still talking about undemocratic systems. Dictatorships, absolute powers exercised by an individual group whose power is not supported by tradition. Uh, Kim Jong-un does not fall under that category either because his, his power is through tradition because there was a grandfather, there's a father, now there's him. Okay, uh, uh, in Zimbabwe, we have Mugabe. Mugabe is a dictator. He really is a dictator. He cheats the elections. He's a dictator. He has absolute uh, power and is exercised by him and a group of people. And they, Mugabe has been in power since 1980. And he's about 90 something years old and don't look like he's going anywhere no time soon. A totalitarian leader, a group of leaders seeks to control all aspects of social and economic life. That's Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un is a totalitarianist, along with the North Korean People's Republic, uh, Democratic Republic Army. Okay, They control all aspects of life in North Korea. Now, I just told you about constitutional monarchs. Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth is a constitutional monarch. Most European monarchies are constitutional, except for Monaco. Monaco, uh, the prince in Monaco is an absolute monarch. He's the head of government. He's the head of state. He does it all. We're still talking about, now we're talking about different systems of government, democratic systems. Uh, democracy, people have ultimate political authority uh, in, a, in a democracy. Is the United States a democracy? And that's the question. The United States is a republic. Okay, we, we vote for our representatives, and our representatives vote for issues that concern us. They, they represent us in their, in, in their vote. They don't always, but they do. And a lot of times they do it at the consent of the people and reflects the will of the majority. So elections are done based at the will of the majority. Now, some people are going to argue, but we do have a we do have electoral college system. 
Uh, I have my own issues with the electoral college system, and it's not because of just this election. I argue that the electoral college system is obsolete and outdated, and it goes back to a time of slavery and oppression, and I think it needs to be removed. But um, so we don't necessarily, so it's not always at the will of the majority, because the majority uh, in the last election did not get their candidate elected as president. Uh, Athenian model of direct democracy. Uh, California, I think, is probably the closest thing to a direct democracy we, we have in this nation. The only reason why I say that is because we have a proposition uh, system where you can get X amount of signatures on an issue. And if you get those X amount of legitimate signatures from uh, on an issue, then you can, um, then you can basically get this on the ballot and we get to vote for it as a, as a, as the citizens of the state of California. Okay. Um, now direct democracy is a political decision made by the people. Now the early forefathers were not in favor of direct democracy because they believed that it would cause mob rule. And so the forefather, they were, they were all for freedom as long as it was freedom for them. <laughs> they wanted to be the upper, they wanted to be the 1%. They didn't like the idea of King George and the aristocracy being the one percent uh this was practiced in certain parts of ancient greece uh the united states does not practice this as a whole and again uh, the forefathers knew what they were doing when they put in the electoral college and remember in the in the early part of our american history what ends up happening to for us as a nation is if you didn't own land if you weren't a white male who owned land you could not vote so we we had that system in place for a long time and luckily for us now we don't have that and i think this next stage of evolution for us as a nation is a one man